what's up and welcome back to another video right here on free will photos i got another on one photo raw tutorial for you today or at least just an overview and some impressions of the 2024 point three release now i didn't make a video on this particular release as soon as it was announced or as soon as it was available I wanted to take some time to really work with it and figure out where the nuances were and things of that sort and then come back to you guys with a really decent review after getting familiar with uh, the more recent updates one of the prized features if you will for this particular update is the fact that no noise ai 2024 has been updated so that's where we're going to start with our overview of this particular software as you can see i have an image that's loaded in i took this a few years back at the gettysburg museum in pennsylvania and you can see i took this at 64,000 iso now to me this isn't too bad it was on the canon eos r6 which is a 20 megapixel sensor the noise the way that it handles noise does a really good job so you know take that for what it's worth but it's still an image taken at 64,000 iso which means this is likely going to be a candidate in most cameras to run a little bit of noise reduction even if you're okay with noise it just looks real artificial so that's why i'm running the noise reduction a lot of people have difference of opinions on noise reduction but let's see how good the noise reduction actually is inside of on one 2024.3 so click on noise and sharpening click on no noise ai and we're going to let on one kind of think itself through and you can see i'm using the no noise ai model 2024. now it looks like it's not doing anything sometimes i have to like hover my mouse over here or i have to click to zoom out and then that tells on one if you look down here in the bottom right corner now it tells on one to start doing the rendering process now i don't know if that's just a glitch on my computer or if everyone's experiencing it so let me know in the comment section below if you're having that problem but once it's done rendering it usually shows up on the screen uh, it didn't this time so then when that happens i have to click into the image to zoom back in and there is my preview so a little quirky i don't know if that's a bug i don't know if that's my computer i have sent a trouble ticket into on one and we tried a few different things uh, but ultimately here's the results right because that's what i want to show you bug or no bug when it's all said and done i do get clean images all right and this is you know I'm moving the uh, the before and after preview slider so you can see just how clean it makes this image and I really look for noise in shadow areas so where we're gonna look is really in this area right here and then also like back over here now there's not much detail in that area so I'm not overly concerned we could also look down here in the lighter shadow area and you'll see how the noise is impacting that particular area you see the color change when I bring back the original image look at how purple or magenta this area is it's kind of hard to decipher like where things uh, end and begin and then as I pull this back over you can see it just takes away that magenta cast it does give it a yellow cast all right I want to be clear but that seems to be more natural at least the yellow cast because there is this light that's you know illuminating this uh, cannon and there's going to be color from that light so this seems to match that a little bit better it looks a little bit more realistic let's look down here in this shadow area we'll pull this over and you can see there's still a lot of color noise issues and you know all kinds of challenges with uh 
just definition. And as we pull this over, it just looks like the shadow ought to look uh, pretty decent. Um, some would say maybe it's a little too smooth, but it's also a shadow. So I think that it's doing a really good job, especially with the crisp lines coming around here. Now I am running luminance at 100% and these are just default settings. I, ha I have found that I personally do not need to change the default settings to get a result that I like. That's subjective. Don't like come after me because I said I don't change the default settings. All right. Sometimes a tool should just be simple enough that you could use the default setting. And then if you have to tweak it, then you tweak it to make it meet the need of whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply because I do like what it's doing to this image. And then it's going to bring us back to uh, the rest of the editing. And we'll take a look at the other updates inside of the 2023 or 2024.3 release. Okay, so now that that has rendered all of the no noise AI on the image, we'll go ahead and zoom out because I like to look at my image as I would look at it uh, without being zoomed into like 100% or anything crazy like that. So the next update is really this user interface. If you hover over any of these menus, you can see that there's like this little hamburger menu. That's what they call it. Uh, some people call it the three line menu. It just depends on what you prefer to refer to it as. Uh, but if you come up to the top here, you get a hamburger menu. And when you click on that, it gives you some check marks. Now these are show hide, uh, relationships. So right now I have the navigator turned off cause I never use that thing. And if I turn it back on, you can see that that tab comes in. If I turn it back off it goes away and what's really cool about this new user interface and I think this is a indicator of the direction on one maybe moving with their software in future releases as they kind of test this out and figure it out right is you can now click and drag each of these items around and re essentially reorder them so if you know you would prefer to have your info at the beginning and then your levels and maybe you're using snapshot more than history so now i can move snapshot over and maybe you're not using history at all well you can come back to this hamburger menu and uncheck history now you only have the tools that you are using this is really really powerful for people who are intimidated by on one photo raw when it initially opens up because there's just too many options but now what we can do is really customize the way that things work so so let's say i don't use the sky tool that often i can uncheck that and now i have just the tools that i use on a regular basis but even more so let's say that my workflow is i do develop and then i want to actually work with portraits uh, or the portrait ai because I'm photographing people primarily like there's just so much customization in this category like I know that it seems like a minor update that you should be able to do those types of things but it really does matter when you are in the groove of editing photos knowing that you can make this however you want so maybe you don't even work with portraits you could just hide that and now you have develop local and effects so you don't have to worry about extra tabs and that's extremely helpful in my opinion i personally like that we have that capability now the next thing that we will talk about is actually inside of the color balance and this is one of those areas i have been advocating that these uis need to resize and they actually started to resize them. So if I make this smaller, you can see that these color wheels, they get smaller. And if I make this larger and don't worry about my screen uh, blinking out whenever I click and drag here, that's just the way my computer works. Uh, but you can see now I have a larger color wheel 
And I think this is in the right direction or a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, they did not update the curves to do the same thing. So you can see I have this larger uh, right pane and my curves are still really, really small. And there's these really, really small boxes where you could put a point. So if I wanted to, I could put a point and I guess it doesn't want to let me put the point there. So I have to drag it from the line and then move it over into that point. Now, I would never do that type of an edit, but in the event that you wanted to use the curves module and put a point you just couldn't do it because it doesn't resize that way uh, let me know if that's a big if that's a pain point for anyone else in the comment section I may be the only person who has that challenge I might be and if I am then I digress but if I'm not it'd be nice to know if there were others who were having the same challenge so those are the major updates for the 2024.3 release. Uh, there are certainly some camera support things, but I usually don't go over that stuff because uh, if you are using a camera that is modern, um, even if on one doesn't support the native raw file, it will support DNGs and JPEG. So if you convert your images over to a DNG through, you know, other software, DNG conversions, uh, and there are some free softwares online uh, that will convert your raw file into a DNG. You can also use in most cameras, uh, native raw processor, you can export those files into DNG. So there's a lot of opportunity available to, you know, get those into on one photo raw so that's why I don't cover that uh, because I think it's good that on one is providing that native support to the photographers that are looking for it but I'm not really going to talk about it that's all I probably talked about it more right now than I have ever in the past now one of the other things that was updated inside of the 2024.3 release was improved export performance and I would love to report that it has moved faster on my computer, but I cannot do that right this second. Um, I've run into a few challenges with batch exporting 10 images and you know, that could just be my computer. Again, I mentioned that I have some trouble tickets in with on one. So hopefully we can get those resolved. But if you are experiencing faster exports, please share it down in the comment section below. And if you're not, then ex share what your experience is with the export options that are being available or that are available. So with that, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you got questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.